Hi guys, in the last video we are now up to a point of having a um, working unit converter and uh, as a web app and basically we uh, use the same function that we had created back way then when we had the uh, uh, command line program and we're using this same function in our web application. And now our web application is in version zero and we wish to take it a, to the next step. And my opinion, the next step would be to get rid of these text fields and replace them with uh, drop downs. And uh, the first thing before we embark on that, first of all, we have to know how is a drop down built in html and i have uh, the template here an html template our old html template <clears throat> this is the old text box uh, from uh, with the from unit and by the way this is how you comment in html uh, angle bracket exclamation mark two hyphens or minuses and then you close that with uh, minus minus and um, an angle bracket so that's the old um, that's the old text box, and here's the drop down, and that's the way a drop down is built. Select this name is identical to this here. The ID is not necessary right now, just for JavaScript, and basically the value is exactly as the value here, which we had in our previous app generated dynamically depending on what the user input, so that uh, the web app can retain. Uh, whatever the user input and that placeholder is basically those labels and it ends every select statement is turned with a select tag is then terminated with the select uh, tag so that's basically how an HTML is built and that's the way it looks that's the HTML file and you can see that's the way that drop downs go. and we're gonna build exactly the same thing here right now uh, how do we go about this? Well, there are multiple ways of doing it. We start with the simplest way, and that's basically just copy that. Go over here, and this is our output. And let's create a, a new variable called uh, from unit dropdown. And that would be equal to this and that. And then the next, uh, then here you can then, let's copy that, or basically that. And then what you can do is basically enhance that or add, extend that variable with this text. And then basically, do the same thing for the remaining lines, if you will. So I got that all. So that is done. I've done my drop down. All I gotta do now is here. Let me just maximize that. Here I am just gonna comment this out and have Python print basically that from unit drop down. And that should output my drop down and make it usable at once. So let's try it out. Uh, I don't need my HTML template anymore. So now we're back in Python. And let's get started. Let's go to 15. Uh, let's go KM to miles. And there we go. And they see now it took it. Now we're using, we, now we have the drop down. And now I can just convert from yards to miles, for instance. And we have it. Now let's try out inches to miles. And we have that. Now you see, every time I pick a unit, <clears throat> uh, it, and, I, and I, once I convert, it jumps back to kilometers because kilometers is the first entry in that list. Now, how can I make it save my selection? So basically, if I choose um, yard to mile, 
that it sticks to yarn. How do I do that? Well, there's a, there's a, a, an attribute uh, that you can use in drop downs, and that is basically the word selected. Let me do an example. Let's say let's 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 put here the word selected. So that means that once you press the convert button, yards is going to be selected. So let's let's try it out. If I go yard to mile convert, now it sticks to yard. However, if I pick obviously if I pick inches and go, I had picked inches, but it jumps back to yard because yard has selected. We need to in a way to generate that dynamically. How, how do I go about that? Well, uh, I can't possibly do it here with this list. So we've got to create our drop down in a more sophisticated way. And the more sophisticated way would be to have it generate by using a list. So basically I, I create a list and let's call that list from units. This list could also be a tuple. It doesn't matter in this case. And this list would contain all the uh, dimensions we got. So I've created my tuple, which is basically, let me maximize that, which is basically a listing of all the dimensions we have. And now what I need is, so what I need is to do the following. This stays, I can leave that. But then from here, we go for i in, and now we got a loop through uh, from unit. So basically range length of from units. And then we need to produce this, uh, this here. So let me just put it in here we don't need that all of that we don't need that anymore and we need that right now from unit option value now we we don't have kilometer here but we terminate the string then string well from units and the index we're currently in which is i in close string plus so basically what i did here with this, I'm saying just write in here between those two double quotes of value, write in whatever dimension you happen to be once looping through this from units list, right? So we don't need this kilometer anymore. But a single quote to go on with the string. And then here, that is the same thing as here, but it has the first letter capitalized. So basically what I do is just copy the whole thing. Uh, here, close that static string again with the same code. Uh, then paste what I need. Remove the kilometer. And then plus. And then open the final static string. Now, the difference here is this one's got to be capitalized. And there's a function which can be added uh, to strings which capitalizes the first letter. It's called capital capitalize. And that capitalizes the first uh, letter of that string. So basically we have based calling the same thing. This one here is capitalized. This is how I generate my dropdown. And then this is the closing statement, i.e. the select. And that's it. Now I have a second method of how to create my dropdown. And let's see if it works. If I say 15 yard to mile and go. Oh, an error. Let me go back. Have I done something wrong? Yeah, I think I got it. And the error is here. I forgot to put a plus. Let me try it out again. Yep, now that should work. Right. Okay, save. And let's try it out. Yeah, works. Perfect. So basically what I've done now, I've created the same dropdown, but now it's with a loop. And, but we still have that problem of it jumping back to the first entry kilometer, basically. How do I, you know, rectify that? Well, now we need a different, uh, we need a new variable, which is called, let's call it from unit selected. Uh, 
and that's NP. And in the loop, now in the loop, we have to, to do the following. We have to compare what are we currently looping through to generate the dropdown and what is currently selected by the user. If both of them are identical, then we have the word selected. Now where the word selected takes place is, is here. Uh, let me go back to the HTML. If you want to have selected, if let's say I chose yards, then the word selected should be here. If I chose uh, nanometers, then the word selected should be here. So that's what Python is basically trying to do. And here we have to, we're using this variable from unit selected. And now we have to put a, a condition, basically if, if what? If, what is our, that if from unit, basically the unit, the user has selected if that is equal to the unit we're currently looping through. If these are equal. So that so basically in that drop down, this is then the unit that has to be has to remain selected. Then this variable is equal to selected. Otherwise, otherwise, it stays empty. And now we have to insert it here. And if you look at the HTML, it gets inserted after the, the, the ending uh, double quotes of the value. So the ending double quotes of the value are here. So have a space, close that string, plus string, and then that variable and close plus open static string. So basically now what happens is we have a variable called from unit selected. If the current unit we're, we're looping through to generate our dropdown, if that is also equal to the one selected, then the word selected should appear next to that uh, or next to that value in the dropdown, and that makes the application retain that value. Okay, so that's the whole uh, thing. Let's save it and let's try it out. If I take 50, let's take 15 yards to mile, convert, and you see now it sticks to yard. If I take 15 inch to mile, now it sticks to inch. So basically now we have a drop down which is working exactly the way we want it. And convert. And now all we got to do is basically do the same work for, uh, for, for, the, for the two units. So what I do now is just basically copy the list and two units. And then all this work, copy that, paste it down here, and just change from to uh, the, you know, that would be two, and that would be two, and two. When doing stuff like that, you've got to be very careful not to miss somebody because then you're mixing from unit stuff into your two units. So one has to be very careful if two units is equal to two units and then two unit and two unit. So we're nearly done now and here as well unit drop down then we got here two units and two units selected and two units capitalized and then anything more here no nope. and then two unit drop down so now we just created a, a, a two unit drop down save that and then down here we just got to comment this text field out and then print two 
two unit drop down. And now we have that situation we envisage right at the beginning that we have that the user chooses drop downs and he doesn't have to type the units himself. Let's try it out. Convert. And now we see we have two drop downs and now and both retain. So basically, let's try mile to yard, convert, and we have it. If I go foot to millimeter, convert, it sticks. So now we have already, this is now version one of our web app. And this one has drop downs and drop downs which retain the entry that the user selects.